How's that for audio? Is that better? Hey, there's Rob Waltz, Chris Galata, Meatball, Rex Waldy, Snapshot, FPV. You guys can all hear me now because I can see audio going up and down. Dave Steele, Ken Starock, Chris Galata, Brian Baker. No audio here. You guys should be getting audio any moment now. Yes. Dave Steele says yes. Good. Meatball. Works. Good. Jerry Knapp, my good friend out in Vegas, 3D print and painting, um, th or 3D HP. Uh, Vape Geek, hello. Uh, I think I got everybody. So, yes, I'm back. Brian is not with me this evening um, because Brian is still in Ontario, and the hotel he's in has got the really worst Wi-Fi they could ever have. Um, so, he won't be joining us, but he will be in the chat tonight. Um, so... <clears throat> Let's uh, get things underway. Morgan Pierce, good evening. Audio is good. Thank you very much, sir. If I'm coming in a little too hot, please let me know, and I will tone that down just a bit. Um, I might come in a little bit hot. This is I'm in my home studio, as you guys can tell. Um, so if I come in just a little bit hot, let me know. And do we have any echo, any other audio issues, any streaming issues? No. Hopefully we don't have any streaming issues. We've got a good connection, so we're good. All right, seven o'clock, let's run that intro. Hey, welcome to the First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here every Wednesday and live stream Saturday night. Usually on a Saturday night, Brian Baker is with me, but he is not this evening. Um, he is on his day job out in Ontario in the wilds of the woods out in Ontario. Um, who, do we, who did we miss in the pre-show? Gary Strong, hello, sir. Um, William Patson, or Patton, I'm sorry, William Patton, Gary T., Everybody says, sounds good here. The stream looks good. Sounds good. Great. Let's get things started. So if anybody watched the quick little live stream I did on Wednesday afternoon, um, that was just to kind of give you guys an idea of what's been going on. Um, without getting uh, too deep into, I've been sick. Other things have been going on in my personal life as well, in my professional life. So I've, it's been really tough. We've got a lot of videos in the can. They just have to be edited. We're going to get to editing those uh, this week or get started this week coming uh, to editing those. And we'll have some brand new episodes coming up for you very, very soon. The first one coming out is on the Creality 3D Viewer. That'll be out on Wednesday. Uh, snapshot FPVs is here come the comments. Okay. Um, give me your questions tonight. I'm here to answer your questions. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the SKR boards. There's Corey Mack. Hello, sir. Um, the SKR boards, especially the E3 dip boards, uh, that have the re replaceable stepper drivers on them. We can talk a little bit about that. I have been testing them in my, uh, in one of my Ender 3s at the shop. Um, the first round didn't go so well. We had some issues. Uh, it didn't want to take the programming as it was meant to be. Um, so we had some issues there. Uh, then we found out that um, it got really, really warm uh, for whatever reason. And I shut it down when I went to turn it back on. The, I believe it was the EEPROM chip or the portion of memory that holds the firmware that blew um, because all I was getting was a white screen. I couldn't add any more firmware to it. It wouldn't accept any new firmware. Uh, so it basically bricked itself. Um, I since replaced that. Uh, it has been running flawlessly since that point. Uh, so you guys uh, will get a video out for that uh, real soon. We're just gonna tie up that video real soon. Uh, we've got uh, a brand new piece of printer that came into the shop um, specifically for the first layer. So we're going to be doing a, a video, a review video on that very soon. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. We've got uh, Jared Armstrong. Hello, sir. 
Alan McGee, what's green and smells like pig? Well, that would be Kermit's finger, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Brian says he's been working on the dip hard, he says. Jamie Lane, uh, Brian, is that a euphemism? <laughs> okay, so now we're into November. Halloween's over. Uh, we did not do a Halloween episode this year, as you guys know. Um, we kind of skipped this year. Uh, we kind of skipped our two-year anniversary as well. So, um, yeah, our two-year anniversary, we, we kind of glossed over it. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, we have had our second anniversary. Uh, we're 200 plus episodes and, uh, thank you guys for all of that. I really do. Richard, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're doing better. I also have an affliction that, uh, has affected atmospheric pressure. I know how it is. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, just to really quickly touch on that from Wednesday, I do get migraines out here in the west when i was in central canada i got them maybe once a year if i was lucky or unlucky depending on your point of view um but out here i seem to get them uh quite often especially when the winter comes because it's so unpredictable the weather here with the chinooks that come over the rocky mountains and stuff like that so um it does cause me to have migraines and when that does everything kind of shuts down because brian's got his own work i've got my own work and we don't really have uh somebody who can help us out with the editing um and right now i'm, I'm kind of torn on that um, i've thought about bringing somebody in to edit but i don't i have a hard time letting go um so i i would be over that person's shoulder and if i didn't like the edit i would redo it anyway so uh yeah it would it's kind of a I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just too stuck on my ways, but um, we do have a bunch of, of videos in the can and we are going to get them out to you. So we've got enough to go through. We are going to be shutting down uh, late December for Christmas into New Year's. We're going to be shutting down for two weeks. Um, in that time, we'll be redoing the studio. Uh, we're going to be working on my studio here at home as well. So there's a lot going on in that two weeks. Uh, Brian, do you get the percent bar back in Marlin 2.0 for the Big Tree SKR Mini E3? Any hints if you do? Um, I don't know if he's if he does or he doesn't. Uh, I know with mine I don't. Not on the dip E3. I don't get a progress bar. Um, so for those that are not in the chat and that are watching. Uh, he says, I think there's a detailed progress bar option under configuration advantage, but I'll check it out and get back to you. What software tools do you use to edit? Oh, wow. That's, I was for the longest time using, um, let me just pot that down just a little bit. I was for the longest time using um, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro uh, with After Effects and with Audition. Um, I have, for the last few months, been using DaVinci Resolve. Um, now, DaVinci Resolve is a very good all-in-one platform. Uh, they've really uh, increased the capabilities of that software. I really like it. And hey, it's free. So if you buy any kind of Blackmagic Design camera, you get the pro version for free. Um, if you wanted to buy the pro version, it's, I think it's about $300, uh, and that's a one-time payment. That's not a yearly payment, not a monthly payment. It's not a subscription. It's a one-time payment. Hey, there's Betty Boop 45, Alteracious. Um, welcome everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I, I still go back and forth, but, uh, I am learning DaVinci Resolve. And I think it's a much power, much more powerful program uh, because, let's face it, DaVinci Resolve is uh, Hollywood color correction software. Um, and since they've, uh, Blackmagic has taken it on full force, they've made it into a full-fledged editing program, not just color correction. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm... I'm that's the one I'm using, but I still use the other ones on occasion as well. So uh, I just don't like paying $60 a month for software that um, I can get for free. 
Uh, so I'll, I'll still continue to create what I need to in After Effects and Photoshop and, and uh, Lightroom and that kind of thing. But uh, I think most of my editing now is going to be done in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, so, is an alteration is saying something about is an unknown condition Prusa i3 Mark II for 50 bucks a steal? Um, well, if it's if it's unknown condition, I would find out if it actually powers up. Um, at 50 bucks, though, you can't really go wrong if there's if you've got to put parts into it to get it to work. You've only spent 50 bucks, so you're not out of pocket a lot of money. So I would uh, I would check it out and see if I can get a hold of it and uh, just double check everything once you get it and find out what works, what doesn't work, and uh, go from there. If you've got to replace rods because they're bent, you know, at 50 bucks you spent for the printer, you haven't really lost much. If you decide not to fix it, then you've got all of these parts that you can use. Um, so Snapshot FPV says, my, the other night my wife said I was being grouchy and mean, so I went to my computer, fired up Cura, and changed my jerk settings. <laughs> All went well the rest of the evening. Um, jerk settings, let's talk about jerk settings for a minute. Um, one of the printers I'm testing right now um, comes from a company called Lotmax, and you guys are going to see that video very soon. Um, Hey, Paul, uh, welcome. Uh, so getting back to that, um, jerk settings, the higher that number, the longer it takes the head to come to a stop over a longer distance. So um, if it's 20 millimeters per second is your jerk setting, that's too long. Um, I've found on any Creality Cartesian-based machine that somewhere between 8 and 5 gives me the best results. So if you change your jerk setting to eight millimeters per second or down to five millimeters per second or anywhere in between there, you should be fine and it should take out any ghosting, um, should take out any ringing in your, your print. Um, and, you know, we've talked about TL smoothers in the past and, and people ask me all the time, should I buy TL smoothers? And I honestly say, don't waste the money on TL smoothers play with the settings that you have on your for your printer whether that be in firmware or through something like Cura where you have the option to make those changes uh, within the software so that you know it can be written as G code and then it overrides what the what the firmware is actually doing um, ba -ba 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 -bum. So Brian brings up a good good point here. Fun fact, he says, Marlin 2.0 has renamed Jerk to Classic Jerk. It will no longer be default. Uh, more on that soon. And I've noticed that as well, um, that uh, there are some uh, things that, that are changing in 2.0. Um, 2.0 still has not been released out of beta yet, so please be careful when you're using it. If you're still very new to firmware and playing in the Arduino space or even in uh, Visual Studio space with Platform I.O., be very careful what you do because you can cause problems for your printer over time. Um, distinctive impressions. Hello, Richard. I'm back and good to, and to go health-wise. I am so glad to hear that, my dear. I am so glad to hear that. Um, I'm glad that you're feeling better. I'm feeling better. I hope our audience is feeling great tonight. Uh, I want to remind you guys that uh, we are starting our campaign here. Hey, there's Mar uh, Marsalis, uh, or Marseus. I'm sorry, Marseus. Um, I just want to say uh, that we are starting our campaign to get Brian and I to China next October. Um, so the Super Chat should be turned on. Um, so if you guys are, are so inclined to, to help us out on the Super Chat, that would be great. Because uh, every penny raised right now through uh, our YouTube funds and uh, through the t-shirt sales that we have at Teespring, all of that money is going to go into a big pot. 
And we're trying to raise the money that we need to go to China next October to visit places like Creality, uh, Arion, Anycubic. Um, hopefully we can get into the Wanhao uh, warehouses and some of these other smaller companies and bring you guys some brand new content from China directly. So you guys get kind of a behind the curtain uh, with our flavor uh, of what uh, Marseilles. I always get that wrong. Um, so you guys will get a, a, a tour the way we get a tour, and we're going to film it that way as well. So um, we need to raise a substantial amount of money, but uh, we'd like to do it through YouTube and through the Super Chats and um, through uh, things like that, through our T-shirt sales uh, over on Teespring. So if you guys want to help out the show, that's great. Uh, please, by all means, share, comment, like. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That brings me to a, a great point here, and I'm going to answer James Lane here in just a moment. Um, get, brings me to a great point because we have about 68 to 70 percent of the people that view our content aren't subscribed. It's real easy. Just hit that little subscribe button, hit the bell so you get don't notified, and that helps out the channel immensely. And we appreciate everybody that comes on and does that for us. So, uh, FYI, uh, James says, the Creality Ender 3 profiles in Cura 4.3 contain start G-code that sets the acceleration and jerk settings to ones which result in very nice prints. Might be a bit of a conversation. Uh, conservative, slow though. Um, he says, and James, I fully agree with you on that. Uh, it is a little slow, but I'd rather it be slow when you get an amazing print than be too fast and you get a horrible print. And I think what they've done here in Cura 4.3 um, was refine what they did in 4.2 because, as you know, by 4.2, they introduced all of the changes that were done in that Creosum mod that we talked about a number of episodes back. When, we, when everybody was kind of jumping on that bandwagon. So what we did um, is we, we kind of examined it. I was not a big fan of the Krios mod. It didn't make any changes for me. But now that it's been refined and it has been incorporated into the latest version of Cura, uh, it seems to be working very, very well. And I'm really, really struggling to hold on to simplify 3D. I find myself right now using uh, Cura 4.3 a lot more than I would uh, Simplify 3D and that's very odd for me because I use Simplify 3D on a huge, huge daily basis. So, um, a distinctive impression says, what are jerk settings? Jerk settings are, is that a time that it takes the head to come to a complete stop uh, before it changes direction. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, I think you'll be okay with the settings that you've got. I think we've walked you through that a couple of times. Um, uh, Marseilles, uh, set at uh, 10 millimeters with 2208s on the Tarantula Pro. I have mine set to 8 millimeters on the on 2208s on the Tarantula Pro. Um, uh, that video is coming out as well very soon. I just have to view. Okay, um, that actually should have. Uh, I know that we've got uh, Raymond's in the house, uh, my good friend Raymond, uh, who I missed on Friday because I was home, not feeling well. I, I must have gotten a touch of that flu because all days I just felt like crap on Friday. Um, but I'm feeling better today. Um, not 100%, but I'm feeling better today. Uh, jerk, sudden, not accelerated, changes in speed. Um, uh, James, you're partially right about that, but it does that the change is over 20 millimeters as opposed to 7 or 8. Um, if you're down to that 7 or 8, you're going to get a much cleaner print. And yes, I am drinking my uh, typical Saturday night drink, a little Jack Daniels and, and uh, Coke. Uh, keeping an eye on the time here, we're about 20 after 7. 
Um, let's uh, get into some more uh, message or questions here about uh, 3D printing. Uh, I am going to finish Superman. You can see him up there in the back. We're going to be doing a review on the Duplicator 7. I'm going to be telling you guys uh, my workflow for resin printing. Um, so we'll be doing a, a, a review on that and we'll be doing safety. I know that, that uh, our good friend... Um, Oh, my, my brain is just mush today. Jerry over at uh, 3D Printing and Painting. Uh, Jerry has done a safety video on it. Uh, we're going to include that as part of our, or we're not going to include his video, but we are going to include safety tips as part of my workflow um, and what I use uh, to get um, resin prints out so that they look, you know, like that. They look amazing. There we go. Uh, that is Mystique's head. Any word on a milestone winning going out? Um, they are still sitting in my out box. Um, I do apologize for that. Um, and they are going to go out before Christmas, I promise you. Um, they are sitting in my out box in my office and I just have not gotten them to the shipping area so that we can print them out yet um, with everything that's been going on since we did that episode. Uh, I've, in all honesty, I forgot to get them out. So they're still sitting there and I will get them out in the month of November. I promise. Hello, TFL from Utah, USA, Jeff Davis. Hello, Jeffrey Davis. How are you? I hope everything's good for you in Utah. We, <laughs> here in Canada, um, the Great White North, we have uh, had s snow, then no snow, then snow, then no snow. Halloween, we had a little bit of snow, but it was all gone. So the kids had a little cooler night trick-or-treating, but um, they're trying to change, here in Canada, at least the last I heard, they're trying to change Halloween to be the last weekend of October. To me, that's not right. It should always be October 31st. And we should just celebrate it as a holiday. Just outside of Niagara Falls, New York. I have been through Niagara Falls, New York. Um, I've been to New York, New York. Um, Niagara Falls is gorgeous on both sides. The Canadian and the U.S. side. I think that's uh, gorgeous. Jeffrey says snow three days ago. I'm sorry. Um, we're expecting snow tomorrow. Um, we're expecting snow for the next three days, I think. Uh, but it's not going to be overly cold. It's only going to be about minus two, minus three, I think. I don't think it's going to be too cold at all. Um, Betty Boop 45, I agree. Brian says, I packed a light jacket to escape the sub-20s temps in Calgary, but now it's low 30s here and raining. Oh, Brian, I'm sorry you're in Ontario, stranded, and that you can't come home. We look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> Corey Mack, 80 degrees here today. Um, the, this show automatically became about the weather. Good evening, everyone. There's my good friend Richard Taylor, RT. Welcome, sir. I hope you have your drink. Um, I was going to use this lens tonight, but it puts me like really, really close to the lens uh, because this is a 50 mil lens. Um, this is what we call the nifty 50. Uh, and this lens just puts me way too far away. This is uh, picked up this acquisition today at a pawn shop for a really good price. So. Uh, but, but, but the only time I went to Niagara Falls was in February and falls were frozen. It was quite a sight. Uh, James, if you want to see some interesting uh, frozen waterfalls, in northern Manitoba, there's a place called Pichu Falls. And it is absolutely breathtaking to see these falls in the winter. I actually have pictures, but I can't pull them up on this computer because they're on another drive somewhere. Um, bu 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 bum. haven't had frost, Art says. Hello, Art.
Ah, uh, distinctive impression says she went to Niagara Falls on both sides of the border on her honeymoon 35 years ago. Ryan says EOS M100. No, this is a 75 to 300 ultrasonic zoom lens. Has no image stabilization, but um, it does have autofocus, so it's a nice it's a nice lens. We're going to use this probably in the studio sometimes. Uh, when we want to get a little further away from from the shot um, and uh, use this to to do some of the stuff that this lens does wow people are moving oh any tips on dual color printers jeffrey's asking okay uh okay hair light yes i'm not you well i am kind of using one i have one up over over here tonight but uh, i'm not it's not really that great but um let's uh let's talk about dual color printers what do i think of dual color printers um i honestly think that currently dual color printers are a waste of money and this is my own personal opinion it may not gel with yours, but I think that dual color printers, and, and the reason I say that they're a waste of money is if it's a single head that has two extruders uh, inlet into it, it has to do a purge in a lot of time, or, or most times. It'll have to purge before it moves to the, the second filament. So when it does that, it wastes material in what we call a purge block. Now, slices are getting better and allowing us to now do uh, purging on our infill. So we can, instead of wasting that plastic in a block outside of our actual print, which takes up space on our print bed too, so don't forget that. Um, you can now with some slicers, uh, I believe, do that purge on your infill. So all of that wasted material isn't wasted, it just goes to the inside. Now, with that being said, if you have a dual head machine, which has two independent um, uh, hot ends and two independent extruders, I think that's a better way to go. Um, uh, I think that's, you're also paying for that premium uh, to be able to do that. You just have to learn how to use the software correctly so that you can uh, get the most out of it. So if you wanted to use water soluble material in one of the print heads, you could, uh, and then use your regular material in the other, use two different materials. You could do that with a dual head machine um, or a dual hot end machine and dual extruder, but you can't do it very well with a single hot end and dual extruder. Um, Do, 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 do. Brian Baker says he bought the EOS M100 with a 15 to 45. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's his first mirrorless. Okay, I have one not in use idle at uh, 175C to stay warm, but not too hot to ooze. Okay, that's not a bad bad thing to say. Uh, is there any way to convert the Creality CR10 so you can have two lines of filament? There are ways to do it. Um, I haven't looked into it so much to actually do it on one of my CR10s. As most people know, I have two of them. Um, and I, because to me it doesn't make any sense to have a dual dual extruders um, it really doesn't pay to put it on a CR10 now if you're doing dual color on a CR10 you can do that um, I've done it and it just involves different processes and separate STL files as you make those processes now that being said um, if you're looking at a dual head machine uh, for a business. Um, the one that I would probably recommend first uh, would be the Flash Forge Creator 3. A good build volume, dual head, everything's enclosed, steel structure inside, um, has, a, has a ABS uh, outside, but 
everything fits together really well and it is a fully enclosed machine. So you can do uh, ABS in that machine, you can do a number of other materials as well. Um, I'm going to convert my dual extruder to dual hot end uh, to use PVA supports and forget about the E3D Cyclone Dream, Morgan Pierce says. Morgan, that's probably a good idea. Um, next time you're in the shop, let's discuss that a little bit. Uh, I'd love to know what your full plan is. Jeffrey says, I have a Zone Star M8R2 with two into one cycle oh, so it's a cyclops okay yeah i agree with brian go check out our video on the crx to see how big the purge blocks can be um i've found the purge blocks to be a real waste of plastic um cyclops is an interesting setup but you are bringing two lines into one extruder, I believe. Yes, that's the way that it goes. And so it's, it's two uh, extruders into one hot end. So uh, snapshot, uh, have, you, have you had much experience with annealing ABS? I find, I find it may strengthen parts, but also makes them brittle and more susceptible to shock. What do you think? Um, ABS, yes. Uh, when you anneal ABS, it can become a little bit more brittle. Um, if you're going to, to anneal plastics, get the plastics that are meant for it, like the Plus or the Pro brands. Um, they will say ABS Pro, they will say ABS Plus. Um, I know recently I've been testing uh, Pro PLA from 3D Fuel. I've also been testing some uh, PLA Plus from Spool 3D and from Kodak. Um, and they do need to be annealed in order to get the same strength properties as ABS. Now, ABS you should not have to anneal. Um, it's the PLAs that you want to anneal. I, I, I'm not so much sure about ABS, but... I would say that ABS doesn't need to be annealed for the most part. Um, so I would say try some of the PLAs that are meant for that, like the Pro PLA from uh, 3D Fuel, or maybe uh, Spool 3D's PLA Plus, or the PLA Plus from Kodak. I think you might find that, uh, yes, they are a premium PLA, but they are going to give you the same strength properties after annealing that you will have with the ABS right off the printer. And they won't be nearly as brittle, I don't think. So I think that might be something to look at for you. Um, somebody asked me a while ago if we were going to do another tool giveaway in January. Uh, it looks like we are. Um, we are just settling on some tools now. Um, some people have also asked me on uh, if I'm going to have samples of the first layer gray and the first layer purple uh, that is being carried exclusively by Spool 3D. Um, I do not have samples, but when you order that uh, from Spool 3D, you're going to get a, uh, I support the first layer key tag, uh, 3D printed with both of those colors in it, so you'll get to see what they look like when they're printing. Hey, there's David Sell. Hello, sir. Uh, he's, Morgan says, I'd like to get Cyclops to work, but even with recommended retraction settings, it jams pretty quickly. So testing uh, gets tedious, yes. Um, anytime that you're dealing with something that has uh, two inlets into one um, hot end, if it's not pulled back enough or if, if it's pulled back too far um, it will solidify and get stuck in the Bowden tube sometimes. So um, I'm sorry I just got distracted squirrel. Um, so yeah Cyclops can be a bit of a problem you really have to look at E3D's website and kind of adjust things according to what they've set up. 
Uh, I'm going to look more into that and we're going to probably talk about uh, those types of extruders in the new year. Okay, um, the first layer, did you ever get your Easy Robot going? Brian's asking me. Yes, I did. Um, the Easy Robot has, has worked. I've played with it a little bit. I haven't played with it too much. There's some more stuff that I want to do. Uh, I do want to break it down um, into its core parts. And I want to 3D print some pieces to make it into a different robot. Now, I do like the the easy robot setup. I like the way that um, you can do uh, programming for it very quick and very easily. Uh, I am still working on the robot for uh, the InMove robot. Uh, I have the head pretty much complete. Um, there's a couple of things I have to do to it, but I still I do have it pretty much complete. Um, and that will be going onto uh, a body that I have started printing uh, at some point. Uh, alterations. How did the last Ender 3 build and learn go? Lots of new happy people. Um, it was a small group. Um, and I guess I can kind of leak some information coming to the new year. It was a small group. It went well. Uh, everybody was satisfied uh, with the class, I hope. At least that's what they told me. Um, we are altering that class next year, and we're going to be doing it a little differently. We're going to have smaller classes once a month at Spool 3D. Um, so there will be about three or four spots available once a month. Uh, and what we're going to do with that is in January, of course, we're going to probably have two classes uh, on alternate weekends. And um, they will be for those people who got brand new 3D printers for Christmas and are unsure where to go next. Um, so it's going to be a real beginner's class. Uh, it will not be a build and learn, but it will be a learn. And we're going to ask people to bring their printers in and we'll have a look at them. And, you know, we'll help them with any little problems that they may be having. And we'll teach them a little bit more about Cura and how to go about um, getting models uh, sliced correctly and getting the best prints that they can out of the printer that they got. Now, hopefully, uh, um, cross your fingers, they all get Ender 3s. Um, but, you know, not everybody will get an Ender 3. Somebody will get something different. They might get a, a mono price. They might get uh, any number of different printers, but uh, we'll do our best uh, to do that class. And then what we're going to do with those classes is once a month, we're going to have different types of classes. So there will be one for intermediates where we talk a little bit more about the deeper parts of Cura and how to really customize it uh, for your machine. And then we'll start getting into a little bit of uh, more about where you can go to design if you don't have design software. Um, we'll talk a little bit about designing, some of the fundamentals of designing. Uh, we may bring in special speakers for that kind of stuff. Uh, so keep an eye out. They will be coming up on our website as we launch our website. Um, it is up. So if you go to the firstlayer.com now, you'll see that I have slowly been working on it, but um, I really need somebody to come sit down with me and just kind of get me through it and get it going. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. More computers, yep, lots of that. I think uh, their design may need more refinement. That's, you're probably right about that. Uh, Snap uh, says, oh, by the way, about ABS in Cura, draft, all seems to work well. That's great. Um, is there a new 3D printer trade show coming in Canada anytime soon? That I do not know. Um, I know that with Make Magazine filing for bankruptcy last year and closing down operation, or this year, early this year, um, I, I haven't been in touch with our representative here in Calgary for Make and Maker Fairs, uh, but is there going to be a 3D fair? I, that I don't know. Um, we have talked about doing a trade show uh, Brian and Derek and myself have talked about doing a sort of a, a trade show, um, a rep rap style festival here in Alberta. 
Um, we're still kind of really in the early early discussion stages of that. But if there's something that you guys would like to see, if you want to make a trip to Canada or if you're in Canada and you want to come to Alberta, please let us know. So that will help us to motivate and also gauge us uh, of how many people might be interested in a 3D printing uh, convention, for lack of a better term, um, where we'll showcase a bunch of different 3D printers, uh, we'll showcase uh, different companies, we'll showcase different shows, like this guy here. Um, so we'll be, we'll be working a little bit more on that this year as our time frees up. Uh, right now, Brian and I, like I said, Brian and I are trying to uh, push to get us to Shenzhen, China next year. So um, again, you know, if you want to help us get there, we're filling up a rocket ship with all the, all the money that will be coming in starting this month in the month of November um, from YouTube and from our t-shirt sales on Teespring. All of that profit money is all going to go into uh, this kitty and hopefully we can make enough to go to Shenzhen next year. If we don't make enough to go to Shenzhen, we'll probably use those funds to upgrade our studio equipment. Um, and uh, we will be giving you guys the, the number that we need to reach probably uh, in December. I know that's probably not a great time, but we'll probably have a better idea of how much we need. And if we don't meet that target, we'll probably use it to upgrade the studio and then whatever's left over, um, we will probably donate to uh, a local um, charity here in Calgary. Um, I know I've got some printers that I'm going to be taking to a school very soon um, because I've got printers now that I don't know what to do with. I have almost 11 printers now. Um, so I'm probably going to take them to a local school to help them with their maker fairs. Uh, anybody who knows anything about Canadian politics knows that Alberta got screwed big time in this last election and uh, school fundings got cut. Uh, there are certain areas that got cut in school funding. And I think that making, um, back when I went to school, we called it industrial arts or shop class. Uh, we learned some great skills like drafting. We learned how to do woodworking, metalworking, photography. Um, if we had 3D printer technology back then, we probably would have learned 3D printer technology. So. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, I've got three printers that uh, I think are probably going to go to school um, and uh, we'll go and do a, a hopefully a, a day trip to, to the school that we pick and uh, talk to them and set them up for them and show them how to use them. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, Thank you, Ben. Howdy. Thank you. Welcome, Ben. Ben Brady. Uh, maybe I'll hit you up about help with the website. I'm a WordPress developer. Uh, William, I would love you to hit me up next week. Uh, I'll be in the shop all week next week. Uh, Kim. Hi, Richard. Is the coffee good getting from Denmark? Yes, Kim. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you for uh, using our buy me a coffee. And yes, we do still have buy me a coffee available uh, for anybody that <laughs> wants to help us out. Um, that money as well will go into uh, our fund for China as well. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Do you need references for web designer artists to work on your website? I don't need references, but I just need somebody to help me out with it. Um, I, there's just not enough hours in the day to edit, record, produce, and handle and get the website done all at the same time. Um, maybe do a GoFundMe page too, James Lane is saying. You know, I think Brian and I have talked about this and I, I'm kind of with Brian on this. I don't want to do a GoFundMe um, because it's not like... I look at GoFundMe as for people who really need that help. Um, I would rather us reach out to our community. Uh, I mean, just by watching our shows and sharing them and commenting and liking and or disliking whatever you like, that helps immensely because 
by watching those ads, which are only 30 second ads, that helps our revenue go up. And we get a little bit more every time you just let an ad roll. Um, so yeah, GoFundMe, if we're, if we're too far away, we may not do it. If we're really close and we just need that little extra push, we may end up doing it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I could go for a small one. <laughs> um, I could always go for a coffee, uh, but my wife will not let me have coffee after about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm not even allowed to have energy drinks after that. Um, time for Alb exit. Okay, not sure. Hey, there's Tim McCoy. Great idea. Uh, Kim Madden, I have, I have buy the coffee off of coffee to you. Um, thank you, um, Kim. I, I love it. I love Kim because of the, it, it's good help. I thank you very much, Kim. Um, and anytime you guys want to buy us coffee, that's great. Uh, we, we do appreciate it a hundred percent. Um, you can buy one, two, three, five, ten. doesn't matter. One's always good. Um, yeah, you can watch with YouTube premium. We don't get nearly as much from YouTube premium as we do from people that don't have YouTube premium. Um, so if you just let the ad play, it works, works good for us. Oh, wow. Hours almost up. We got about 15 minutes. Um, Tim McCoyne, speaking of, of you, I was thinking about you yesterday. I wanted to get back to you. And uh, if you can please give me a phone call on Monday when I'm back in the studio, um, that would be great because I think I want to talk to you about doing those business cards we talked about. Um, I think with what was in the letter, I think that would be, that would work great for us. Um, and Tim, if you need any help with your printers, you know who to come see. So Kim saying, thanks for the help on buying the right material for my 3D printer, the artillery. I know a lot of, uh, about plastic. I'm working in plastic for 35 years now, but not tried 3D printing. Well, I'm glad that you got something out of it. Um, yeah, I know premium doesn't play any ads, uh, Ben, but we get a little bit from the premium. Those people that are subscribed to us, we get a little bit from it, but we don't get nearly as much from those that aren't subscribed to, um, we get a higher percentage of ad revenue from those that are not subscribed to premium, just so you know, Ben. Okay, so. Um, what do I want to talk about real quick? What do we got coming up on Wednesday? I want to tell you guys before we get to the end here. Um, Wednesday, we are going to talk about the Creality 3D Viewer. And you're going to see whether it's a good fit for you or not. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Uh, but it is a, it's a kind of an interesting little tool. There's a couple of videos out there that people have gotten. I know I'm kind of late to the party on it, but... Uh, I wanted to make sure I really thoroughly tested the system and see how it was going to work, what the pros and the cons were of it before I let that video out. Uh, so that's coming up on Wednesday. The next Saturday, we will not be here on the 9th. Um, I just want to let you guys know that. Uh, I am going to be celebrating a birthday of somebody that is very, very special to me and my wife. And uh, we're going to be out at uh, that little party next Saturday. So there will be no show next Saturday. Um, but we are going to have a Wednesday show. And then we're going to return the following week. Am I going to finish Superman? I know somebody's going to ask that. Yes, I'm going to finish the Superman. We're going we're gonna to actually do a couple more videos on it. And um, the Superman will get done. And you guys will see that. Uh, we're going to talk more about resin printing, as I said, in the very near future. So we're going to talk more about resin printing. We're going to talk more about painting. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about painting and airbrushes. Um, and I did reach out to Badger uh, recently, so I'm waiting for them to get back to me. Uh, do, 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 do. Have I tried the artillery printer? No, I have not. Um, 
When a lot of people were getting them, I did reach out to artillery, but unfortunately at that time we had not hit 10,000 subscribers um, or the company that puts out the artillery printer. We hadn't reached 10,000 subscribers yet. Uh, now we're over that substantially. Um, we're at 11, almost 12,000, somewhere in there. I can't remember. Um, but I would love to try the artillery printer and put it through its paces. I'm For you guys out there, I know some of you guys like watching build videos. Um, I find build videos tedious. I find them tedious to do and I find them tedious to watch. So what I think we're going to do, we're going to change up the way that we do build videos um, for 3D printers and that's going to be all coming right around the new year. You guys are going to start seeing our changes in that. Um, we're, it'll be more B-roll, more voiceover stuff. Uh, get through it quicker and get to the actual how does it work, how does it print, and is it good for you? That's, uh, that's what we want to do. We want to get the message out there of whether it's good or not for you because at the end of the day, this channel is still for the beginner, the intermediate, and those that are just making it into uh, expert um, because, you know, we're not experts either. I mean, we... We spend, Brian and I both spend countless hours a week looking at new developments in 3D printing, what's coming down the line. Uh, we talk about software all the time. We talk about firmware. We talk about new boards. Um, are they worth your hard-earned hard -earned money? Um, so we want to give you guys the best information we can, but we want to give it to you in an educational and entertaining way as we've strive to do for this past two years and as we're going into year three uh, we really want to make this the best that it can be for you guys and of course um, Ben build videos are boring uh, let's let's see better review videos uh, I agree with that Charlie Cheen uh, <laughs> or Charlie Charlie Cheen uh, does anyone here know what is happening with Lulzbot um, there's been some news about Lulzbot recently um, I'm not going to comment on it yet because I don't have the full story and I do not want to give you guys false information. But uh, suffice it to say, if I get any information, I will publish it on our Facebook page and I will try to publish it as a blog on our website um, and we'll go from there. So uh, Lulzbot, there's been some rumors that I've heard, um, but I am going to look into it further for you guys because I really want you guys to have the best information about that. The first build video I ever made uh, distilled over 20 hours of footage into 10 minute video was a lot of work to edit. Yeah, James, I agree. Um, doing build videos does take a lot of time. I have four hours of footage on the um, uh, Tarantula Pro. Now, since I've made that video, I've made a couple of minor changes to that printer. Um, and I'll, I'm going to do a, a follow-up so you guys will get to see um, kind of my, my final thoughts on it. My buddy bought one less than a month ago. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Take care, better health uh, to you and yours. Brian, same to you and all of you in internet land. Thank you, Snapshot FPV, and thank you all again for um, being a part of our community and helping our community to grow. Uh, it does help us out immensely. Um, again, uh, I know it's, it's a tough, tough economic time for everybody. Um, if you can help us out, great. If you can't, um, that's fine too. Just keep watching the show, keep sharing, keep liking or unliking or not liking. Um, not unsubscribing, keep subscribed and keep passing things on to your friends. Uh, and uh, we hope to bring you guys more information and the best information that we can as we move into 2020. Um, I'm giddy as a schoolboy. Uh, Betty Boop 45, like your show. Thank you very much. Um, I know I'm not the handsomest guy, but uh, we got Star Wars Rise of Skywalker coming out uh, December 20th. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, as most people know. Um, I'm just a geek about it. 
uh, and <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I want to do some Star Wars stuff on the show, and uh, that should be a couple of fun episodes. Brian is going to get a bigger head being called Brain. <laughs> well, he cut off some of his hair, so his head's not that big anymore. So keep liking, keep sharing. Um, check out, I'm going to change up some t-shirts again. If you guys want to see some new t-shirt designs, let me know. Uh, leave a comment down below on today's uh, live stream or go over to our Facebook page and mark some comments in there. That would be great. Uh, we do have an Instagram, um, and I have been building out a store on uh, Amazon, so all of these things are going to help us in the end, and uh, they will make for a much better uh, and much better show for you guys, updating equipment and getting our butts uh, over to China and uh, touring Shenzhen and getting some of the behind the scenes stuff for you guys. Uh, oh shit, just realized that. <laughs> um, okay, uh, it's about time he got a haircut. He did get a haircut and he looks actually very good. Looks, he looks like a gentleman again. He doesn't look like a hippie. I was wondering if he was going to start wearing tie-dyed shirts. Brian, you know I love you and I'll see you when you get back. Uh, but with that said, guys, that's pretty much my time for tonight. I'm going to go and finish my drink and uh, have some time with my wife. Thank you again for everybody being here tonight. Uh, we always enjoy you guys, and I always love to see your comments and your questions. Um, I won't be here next Saturday uh, because I'll be at a birthday party, uh, but I will have a new episode for you on Wednesday. So watch your streams for that. And we will see you guys on Wednesday. Remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Until next time, my friends. Now i got to find the stop button. There we go. See you then.